Okay, I have a 92 Toyota Corolla. And uh, I want to do a radio swap. So before I fucked around with it, I was on Crutchfield and eBay and everything, you name it, looking for a uh, wire harness adapter and uh, possibly like, you know, a mounting structure. I didn't find shit, nothing, zip, none. So at any rate, I decided to fuck around with it tonight because I had to do the blower motor and I had it all ripped apart anyways. But uh, get a picture of the dash here, make sure it's uh, the same as yours. You know, usually the clock goes up top. Check this out. I've never seen anybody do it like this. Now granted, you know, Imports in the 90s were about as cheap as anything could possibly get. The motors were great. Everything else was shit. But look at that. And of course, that lines up. And it's got to be in perfect position to line up with the bezel. And of course, if the bezel's in the way, you can't get to the fasteners. Which you can't tell from the video. But those fasteners are really deep. They're tight. You're going to have to crack it with a socket, they're six point and they're Phillips, and then use like a magnetic Phillips, Phillips bit to loosen it. But, I don't know, we'll see. I'm going to go ahead and pull it out and then at least I'll uh, show you what the harness on the back looks like. Because I couldn't find anybody on YouTube. I was hoping I could see something and save ripping this apart and just order parts. But, uh, yeah, it's time to get a new radio in there. Okay, I got it out. So we have these uh, four eight millimeter screws. Well, eight millimeter socket with Phillips heads right there. And uh, I ended up not using my magnet. I used, boy, what is that? About like a, an 18 inch extension, a little bit overkill. But basically... I broke it with the quarter inch ratchet and then I was able to twist it and they're long enough that I was able to tip it down and then bring it out and I didn't lose any of them. But at any rate, this is a pain in the ass. It's definitely got a hardcore proprietary Toyota connection and then it's got this right here which is almost like a serial interface. It reminds me of like the PS2 mouses and stuff like that. I don't know if that'd be for like a CD changer or if it's a diagnostic service port. If somebody knows and wants to leave it in the comment, feel free. But there you go. Uh, the wider one, that's your speakers. <clears throat> okay, so that's simple. If you absolutely can't find this connector, we should be able to leave about four inches. I say that because... If you snip it right here, you could never reuse the connectors. That may not be a big deal to you, but it, it gives you the option of the future, especially if you're going to sell the car. But at any rate, okay, speakers are easy. As far as power, I'm going to have to see if I can get a pin out. If I do, I'll, <clears throat> I'll either splice it in or add it in the crotch box if I already published this. But you could see here, this is your power connector. You got your red, obviously power. You got a black, negative. You got a yellow, which I'm gonna guess is your uh, always on power for your uh, preset memories. But then you got these two white ones. You got a big fat one and it's all white. And then you got a little skinny one that's white with a green stripe. So I'm guessing the yellow is the always on power, but it could be one of those three. But you could still get it where, well, you know what? One probably is illumination. So when you turn down the dimmer on the lights on the dash, you dim the radio. <clears throat> that would actually be pretty easy. If I end up cutting this, what I'll do is I'll, I'll play with it and cut them and see which one makes it not do what. And then I'll be able to better give you a pin out. If for any reason you want to know more about the radio... Let me go ahead and get that on here. Maybe you want to just replace the same radio. This Toyota Logic Deck. What are they, Apple? Now that may be a part number, but it's on the bracket. So I'm going to guess that's a bracket number. <laughs> There's a M5 times 8 max. 
You'd think the M5 is a metric five, but could that be eight watt max? I don't know. Anyways, I was hoping to get more of a part number, but I think there was a label that came off and I couldn't find it in my dash. Well, that, that might be it. YEFF01681. But see, there's not much on the top. Ah, One-handed bandit. That's the only number on the top. F A O three one one three O or zeros, I don't know. And then on the bottom, you could totally see where there was a sticker. And that probably would have maybe given us our pinouts, which would have saved a little time. And there's that F A O five five one four. So yep, yeah, that's it on this video. That might be as far as I get, unless if I decide to tackle this project. But I'm going to have to order a radio, so I'll at least get this up there. So if any of you acquire this year frame uh, body style. and you Okay, I thought it would only be fair if I had it ripped out to give you dimensions. So going this way, 6 and 5 sixteenths. And you can see it's uh, kind of angled up here. That's going to the back. So I'm trying to help you out here so you know how much room you got for your radio. Okay, so that's six and five sixteenths. Now side to side, sorry about the blurriness there. There you go. And we're looking at about seven and an eighth on the radio. Hold on, let me get a bracket to bracket. Yeah, seven and an eighth. And that's including the thickness of the two brackets. So you got at least seven and an eighth wide. And then it looks like, yeah, you'd have to rig it. Anything wider and you're going to have to really play with it or make your own brackets. That's probably what I'll end up doing. Well, you know what really makes this fucking suck? They're staggered. You know what I mean? That would be an easy ass bracket if these lined up. But no, they don't line up. So now, I want you to know how much room we got behind here. That's going to be a little harder. So what I'm going to do, let's see. On the left side, the top one comes forward. On the right side, the top one comes forward. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use that as reference, okay? So, you're looking at about about three and a quarter roughly okay so now oh, I don't want to hold the flashlight on this one I think I'm gonna to have to turn the flash on okay let there be light and show them for big blocks is let there be light okay oh this is tight with the camera Oh, that is so hard to see. It may I may not hold it good because I'm going to try to look here. Three, about three and a half inches. Let's make sure the other side wants to play nice. Maybe a little bit more, like three and a quarter. I'd say you're safe with about three and a half. You know, and this is like raised, lower, raised, lower. So I went by the raised. Oh, look at that. It pushes back. So if you had to, that's probably part of the air box. So you probably can't cut into it. It's hard that, yeah, that's the air box for the defrosters. So you could push into it, but you don't want to cut into it. Unless if. You make a cutout, like a drop box, you know? You'd have to cut out a little rectangle and then make something that would basically make an indention and then seal it. You know what I'm saying? Something with like a bottle and sheet metal or I don't know, whatever. Poster board that's like plastic based. Sky's the limit, whatever you can think of. Okay, so let's see, I said three and a half, right?
So that gives us not a whole lot of room to work with. You could see for yourself. Less than a half of an inch. Again, not easy to eyeball through the camera, but there you go. We got to about that three and a half, and where's that end? Eh, yeah, not a lot. Doable, but not a lot. So I guess make sure your head unit, because you're going to need room for your plugs, and you almost don't have room for an adapter, unless if you can push it. Which you could push against that heater box. These are the two wires that you're going to need to find a harness for. Which is kind of hard, but I found it and I'm going to show you. Okay, so let me grab the radio here. Probably should have cleaned up before I did this. It's kind of a mess. Okay, so when you look at the radio, there is no bezel, okay? It's bezel-less, smooth all the way around okay toyota's got these two brackets that bolt well one on this side and it's got the uh these bolts machine thread and then on this side i already took it off but it had one for that side okay actually it went like this now, when you bolt that off, <coughs> here's a typical aftermarket radio, okay? What I'm going to have to do, and I'll get to the harness in a second, the aftermarket radios are going to have this bezel on it. Sorry I didn't show you popping it off. And it's going to have this, okay? On mine, which is pretty common, all I had to do is get a little flathead, stick it in there, to be able to pop this up on both sides so I use two little mini flatheads and then the whole radio slid out from the sleeve okay then there is a bezel that was on the front and the bezel does not require this part it had this clip this clip and then one there and one there and of course, you just take a flat head, pop all four corners, that comes off. Then you have it nice and smooth, okay? There's not a lot of work, or not a lot of room for really long radios. This one is just about the same as the stocker. As you can see, maybe a tat longer. Now, the problem I ran into, and I think you're going to run into it on other radios, is that on the Toyota radio, oh, I love having one hand, these holes are threaded, okay? <clears throat> on this radio, they're not. It wants more of like a self-tapper. So, I tried fighting and getting this one in without success now let's say you lost those and you want to get the stock one in may not be a bad time to try to show you that <clears throat> okay the stock screws metric 5 dash point 80 metric 5 dash point 80 okay so as far as the harness okay Here's the harness wire I got. The main bulk harness is going to carry all your power and everything. And it's going to carry two of your speakers. 
I can't remember the colors off the top of my head, but I'll uh, I'll go ahead and splice in what each pin on this radio goes to. And then that second harness just added the other two speakers. Usually they say on there. I'll slip it in here though. That came in this packaging. American International Wire Harness. <clears throat> TWH950. 86 through 2012 Toyota and Select Imports. So, that right there is half the battle. You find that sucker or something similar. Because most of them I saw, they use different connectors throughout the years. Even during those years, it was hard to find those. At least at the time that I did it. Okay, I'll give you a couple tips on the wiring in case if you need it. Tripod would have made this a lot easier. Okay, now I'm just using a test wire here. It's a little thicker, but it'll demonstrate the point. When you go to twist your harness to the radio, and again, I'm trying to, trying to do this out, and then my focus goes out. Hold on. Let's hold it this way. Okay, what you want to do, if you can kind of see that, you want to make sure these are split across, okay? And you want to choke up at the base. Let me show you here. And you want to twist with your fingers low so both wires start twisting together. You don't want one wire twisting around the other wire. You want to make sure they both twist. That's why you keep that little V. And then right where the V hits its point is where you want to squeeze kind of hard and twist to make sure they're both twisting. Okay, now as far as putting it together, there's not, you're not going to use a butt splice. I mean, you could, but... I like getting it twisted like this and having really good contact. What I've found, telephone crimpers, okay, they work great. Like for telephone wire, I'll see if I can find a leak, a link, because that's kind of a commercial product. You don't just get that at the store, and I'll I'll post it now. Unless if I can't find it. But uh, these work really good. Because you could slip it in there. And when you push all the way. If you could see. There's like a little collar to the left side. That'll like literally come over the insulation. And then what I usually do. Is after I get it on. I take some uh, vice grips. Kind of like this. And I pinch it. So I'll go ahead and give you an example of one I did here. Because I did all mine like that. But you can kind of see how it's smushed on. And it, it works really, really well. Okay. Or you can do the butt splicers, which tend to come loose over time. You know, temperature variations, heat and cooling, heat and cooling. They tend to pop loose. Now, the other way to do this, the cheap way, and it's effective, is electrical tape. And let me show you how I do it, okay? For starters, I just take a piece. Now, mind you, I, I strip back probably about a half inch, maybe a little more on each wire. It gets a little bit shorter when you twist them. And then sometimes I cut the, the tip off just to kind of clean it up. You could take electrical wiring tape, black electrical tape. And again, I'm doing this on a real shitty angle because I forgot to bring my tripod. And I didn't really, you know, I, I, I would be much more meticulous if I was doing this, you know, for real. But you get the point. 
I do that first. <clears throat> then I take another piece about two inches long. And what I do is I come in like this. And as you rotate, you pinch it in. See what I'm doing? And then, you know, lift a little bit of tension. Again, this is a really shitty angle for me to work on and shitty for you to watch. But you kind of get the idea. But you could do them all that way. And then they're, they're not going to go anywhere if you do it that way. So, when you have your harness all put together, the only one I didn't hook up yet is my orange. This uh, particular Toyota doesn't have this lead. And what this orange would do is it's going to be your dimmer, okay? So that when you put your headlights on, it dims the radio so it's not super bright at night. And so that when your headlights are on and you do the little dimmer knob for your dash, the radio works with it. Okay, what I did, I took all my ends, at least my bulkheads, okay? I taped them together to keep them together, and I made sure I overlapped the bases just to be safe in case if any of these did start to pull out, you know, from temperature fluctuation or vib driving vibration. And then I also put a little mini zip tie on the base too, just so if anything snags or anything, it's kind of holding it together. This is going to go to my amp so that when the radio turns on, the amp knows it and it switches a relay to turn your amp on because your amp's fed a constant hot, you know, through thicker gauge wire. I'm just going to leave it like that. My end snipped clean and then I put this on just to be extra safe, but I want to leave it out. I could have cleaned it up and put it in one of those, but I'm going to come back this summer and probably put an amp on. Here's our orange for illumination. But Another part of the speaker bulkhead. And another thing, and I, I don't know if I explained this earlier, this is hard to explain. When you're making these splices, you want to try to keep all your wires from like turning into a rat's nest. You know, like they shouldn't be twirled around each other when you're making those splices because you want everything kind of like that where it comes out nice. <clears throat> uh, my ground was a lot longer rather than snip it and make it look neat. I wanted the extra wire just because you never know what you're going to, what vehicle you're going to use this in if you ever pull it out. I've used this radio in another vehicle so uh, that I upgraded and this was an extra radio. But yeah, be mindful of that. Okay, so while I'm doing this antenna, when I initially installed this, my front left speaker wasn't working, okay? And I knew I had to do the antenna. So I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'll just wait till I do the antenna. So I assumed it was going to be in my connection. Okay? And granted, this is my repair. But it wasn't. It was actually not done right in the harness. So what I ended up doing was... <clears throat> the... Uh, you could stick a pick tool in there. And, you know, it's like it's forked. So you got to stick two pick tools to pinch it so it can slide out. And then once I did that, I was able to uh, basically recrimp on. I very tediously used a small little flathead. I undid the crimps. This wasn't soldered at all. And then when I did that, I was able to get this white wire off, okay? And then, this white wire is a little bit too short, so I used another wire. Now, I only have white in 10 gauge and 12 gauge, and this shit's really thin. I mean, it's like, I'm going to say 20, maybe even 22. The installation is like 20, and the wire itself is like 22, it's real thin shit. That's probably why when they crimped it, it didn't hold up. But at any rate, now I got a red wire where a solid white should be. 
and a solid white that used to actually be labeled. Let me show you here. Left front. Could you read that backwards? So that's kind of bugs me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to zip tie this onto the red wire so that whoever works on this next can figure out what the hell happened. You know what I mean? Otherwise, if they go hooking up red the hot or something like that, it's bad. So I guess shame on me for not just waiting and getting white wire. But uh, I want this done. So the actual Sony connector, <clears throat> I can't even fit a probe. That shows you how small that is. So I had to use my pick tool. But now with that new connection, I can do a continuity check. See? So before I didn't get that continuity, I'm basically going right there. I wasn't able to get that continuity. So then when I undid my plug, I did a continuity from the plug to the end, got continuity. Did the other end to this plug, didn't get continuity. You know what? I reversed that. Got continuity on this one and didn't get continuity on that one. So, but yeah, that white wire, it's hard to really show you, but that's just incredibly thin. This little pick tool, that's like, like a little needle, okay? Look how cheap they're making that shit. You see that? Just really, really thin. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, zip tie that on there. Okay, <clears throat> I didn't zip tie it. I decided just to tape it and I got the left front sticking out Kind of ghetto rigged, but it works So let me go ahead and get that uh, loom strap back up Okay, <clears throat> I got the loom pretty much back where I had it Just with that extra ugly red wire in there But as you can see even after my final taping I double check it harness is fixed but you know what was interesting when I opened the old box up nice little semi mid-school vintage radio it actually came with hardware for Japanese radios so I can't give you a thread size because it's more of like a uh, like a specialty screw, but they fit, man. So I'm going to go ahead and use those in place of mine. Mine fit too, but I mean, that's made for it. And made for it to me is always a little bit cleaner. So I just wanted to show you that, but let me go ahead and pop it in there. No dimmer means the radio will be a little bright at night. It's kind of a bummer. Already, I got the radio in. I got to get the bottom two bolts. I was just test fitting everything. Make sure you leave your provision for your uh, clock and the uh, wire for your hazards. Don't lose those. The hazard wire could get tucked to the side, especially if you tuck it there to give yourself room while you're working. And then you may have to use your hand as you're putting this in to finagle those wires back there. Like uh, the connector couldn't be like this. I had to use my left hand to angle it like this. It's a snug fit, but it fit. Figured I'd be a nice guy and show you with the bottom two bolts in. You may be using this as a reverse install. In case if I miss something the first time, because this has kind of been a choppy video I'm putting together. And it's dark. Maybe I could get my light up in there a little more. You can kind of see that lower one. Okay, I went ahead and got the uh, upper trim bezel on. You got this lower screw this lower screw this lower screw for a total of three on the bottom one upper 
two upper, three upper, oh, four upper, three, four. Now I got a gap. It's not horrible, but I would have liked less gap. I think there's a good chance I can snap the bezel on, but I already tried seeing if the bezel would clear and it wouldn't. So if I do get it to go on, I may have to break it in order to get this back off. Unless if this would pop out without breaking these little feet that are supposed to be clipped back. So let me see if that'll pop on. Now I tried. That bezel won't fit on. It's just not going to make it. I even tried pushing up and pushing down. I fucked with it. You could uh, cut the clips off and probably use a little double face tape. I'll see. I might do that later. I hate ruining a piece though. millimeter Okay, there's those four. Oh, I forgot my side one. Actually better off doing this one first and this one last. Speaker wire.
Phillips. Probably like a number two. One down there and one under here. That one's in really tight. No clip, just in tight. rear defrogger you can use your thumb to depress it okay I usually start with the uh, more difficult ones in the center here where you got to use a stubby. I eventually got to go back in here yet again to put a serious XM tuner in. But I'm holding off because I'm trying to come up with a system, a quick release system to switch tuners from different vehicles. That's kind of my plan. Otherwise, it's too many subscriptions. Okay, that's the four on the top. Nope, wrong one. I'm taking off the gauge cluster. Snug that back up. Middle one. Bottom right.
got to get this top one off. Trying to remember where the clip was. It might not be a clip. No clip. Okay. Actually, I want to switch. Switch tools. Eight millimeter. Grab our little leash. And as you can see, not a lot of room. Let's try to get you in there. Not a lot of room. <laughs> 